Welcome back to Totally Tea, your solutions girls. Today we're talking about frequencies. Everybody's been talking about it, but I know Kathy Strand and she has a lot of information with a 12 year practice. So what you're gonna find out in this episode of part one is what are frequencies? What's the importance of using accurate frequencies? What experience has Kathy witnessed in her 12 year practice? And you'll also hear some testimonies from me and Anita. Join in. Today, I am introducing Kathy Strand to Anita Corrigan. Neither one know them, but they have both had a big influence in my life. And let me tell you why. Frequencies. Kathy has been educating me for, I don't even remember how many years, five, seven years now about frequencies. She's always my go-to girl, has so much knowledge. So, Kathy, why don't you relate to Anita, how you got involved in frequencies, what's your background? Hi, Anita. So my background is I'm a nurse. I come from the heart world. I, was, I am and was a cardiology nurse. So I've been around uh, all kinds of illnesses for many, many years. But uh, the main thing about it is I, we, what I thought is I was an ICU nurse, a uh, director of intensive care. So I was hidden back in the backyards of the hospital. And when people left my intensive care unit, I thought they were better. And I didn't ever know that sometimes when they went home, they were actually worse. And um, my mother was actually one of those. My mother had degenerative disc disease. She had old age back. She was a farm woman and had been hauling hay and moving water pipe and, and uh, just wore back out. And from the medical world, they just basically said, there's nothing else we can do for you. You've got horrible pain. You're going to live like that. You're going to be on a lot of drugs and chemicals, but we can't do anything for you. And my mom's just a tough old farm woman. And she just said, it's not going to be me. So I had the opportunity to meet someone that was using frequencies. And uh, I've been involved with it now for 12 years. And I've, I've worked with probably 27,000 patients and with every kind of disease and every kind of condition and every kind of pain. And, and, uh, and so it, it's been an eye-opening, amazing experience for me because I really was not exposed to anything to do with frequencies. But after I got involved with uh, a product that I really was impressed with that, that delivered a million frequencies, and it, 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 I found out and began to study that it was all about the accuracy of the frequency. So we're talking about a frequency with things that um, resonate, it's vibration. So if you go back to Tesla, Tesla says, if you know, want to know the frequencies of the, I mean, if you want to know the secret of the universe, think of frequencies, vibration, and energy. And of course, that is kind of where all this comes back from. There's a long background in it about frequencies, about um, about energy and it came way back into uh, the world of Tesla and Robert Beck and ultrasound and uh, let's see words that people might understand, Royal Rife. Uh, so, and then the Nobel Prize was won with using frequencies. And so it's got a huge background but people really didn't pay much attention to it forever and ever. And, um, in my research, I found out there was a period of time, I wish I could tell you right now the date, but uh, I do have that. <laughs> and that particular date was when all of medicine was using frequencies. But there was a period of time that this uh, guy came in and he says, you know what, we need to take medicine instead of a, like going to secretarial school where everybody could go and just signing up and becoming a doctor or a medical practitioner of some kind, he said, we need to take it to the university level. And when we take it to the university level, we're gonna have to not do frequencies, which is what we've been doing and getting great results. We need to go back and do drugs and chemicals and, and other forms of treatment rather than, than just giving frequencies. He just didn't think it was so advanced. So really when that change happened, it was a total division. We are frequencies using it for medicine. Now we're not frequencies. So I thought that was a really cool and interesting um, idea that now we just switch medicine. And so in that, we, the medicine moved forward, of course, with everything from drugs to chemotherapy to all the other avenues. 
and then frequencies kind of declined because people weren't familiar with them. They were exposed in the medical world one direction and not in the frequency world. Well, I come from the medicine world, but when I began to research some of this, I've known it. I mean, I found out it was everywhere. I was the one that was behind. I was the one that didn't have knowledge. I was the one that was lost in the history. And so I, for my mom, uh, she, and literally the first day we ever put her on frequencies and was able to do accurate frequencies on her, we made 90% improvement in the first 12 minutes. So then I began, I actually bought a piece of equipment. I opened a clinic. It's now been open 12 years. So through this journey, I was really interested in more and more. So I began to study and find out more what's going on and, and why it works. So uh, I began to, to venture off into some other things that you call bioenergetics or energy medicine. I then realized there's more than even the frequencies. It's how they're used around you or on you. And it's also how they use it around you. So that quantum physics part is also very fascinating to me. So now I've just uh, broadened my views. I've added new things to my practice. I've just got a new little toy. I actually got it today. I'll show it to you if you're interested in it. And it's just expanded and I've seen changes with people's lives like I never saw in medicine. So it, that part's been really fun because I can work with a Parkinson's patients or MS or migraine headaches or, uh, you know, or Lyme disease and all of the things that we work with in medicine, I was able to do frequencies with them and make a difference. My experience with using the right frequencies accurately, uh, Kathy actually helped me with my frozen shoulder. Kathy didn't know the pain that I was in, never told her. We were actually at an expo, so they were in a booth right beside me and offered every single day. This is like, we all have pain, where's your pain? Let me show, you know, you have to try it to believe it. And so finally, I went ahead and, and, and did try this. Well, where's your pain? Everybody's got pain. I was like, well, my shoulder. Well, well I raised my, shul my shoulder. I raised my arm about this. I don't know if you can say, but, but that's about all I could do. And 15 minutes later, I was able to raise it up to here, which I hadn't done in two years. So I went ahead and uh, went upon Kathy's recommendation. And, and I think it was about two, three weeks later, I was able to move my arm freely without it hurting. And I continued to use that for a while. And then what is interesting about shoulders is it eventually will happen on the other shoulder. <laughs> And I knew what it felt like, and I knew the signs. I jumped right on it, got rid of that frozen shoulder as well. So I have used frequencies with my whole family and even with our animals, and our animals love it. Uh, animals don't lie. Like, if they can get up and move freely in the mornings, the ones that have arthritis, and then whenever you're like, whoops, okay, uh, I didn't use that last night, and now they're... It's harder for them to get up, but you're like, okay, we missed something. So absolutely, you know, frequencies work. But what's interesting is when you see it work, then you want to know the why, <laughs> why, right? Explain to Kathy and Anita what your background is and what you understand about frequencies. Well, thank you, Tony. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be among, amongst people who think outside of the normal box. It's refreshing. And um, my journey in discoveries in medicine and chemistry and technologies has taken me on an, an eclectic journey. And uh, it's been a 35 year journey and I'm only 29, so that's pretty amazing, right? Uh, so as you were speaking, I was very intrigued at your um, handle on the history of how this actually developed. As we know in 1920 is where they really started looking at this as a modality for treatment of any kind of maladies, right? And they started using this as detect as a um, detection, determining where they could pinpoint problems. And um, I've worked with various types of different um, energy detecting, treating, etc. Over time, Kathy, I am uh, excited to collaborate with you because. It has value in both places. Uh, everything on the planet has a frequency. Everything. 
And when we can actually bring something back into its correct resonance, that I think is what is pretty phenomenal because when the body put in the correct, correct conditions, it can actually heal itself. <clears throat> One of the biggest challenges, I believe, Kathy, if you might agree with this, is the challenge in neuropathy or nerve damage. Um, and frequencies happen to have the biggest effect on nerve issues, including things that have a synapsis, things that actually have to have a connectivity electrically, which would be brain tissue. I've seen some pretty amazing things in my world, in my time. And um, the effect of frequencies on children who, be, who have um, been uh, born or developed spectrum problems, autism spectrum problems, um, people with, um, low brain function, not so much just pain. I've dealt with a lot of people who are athletes and have actually treated um, their injuries. Uh, the old methods of, of the early 19, 1800, late 1800s, early 1900s for a sprain was what, you know? <laughs> Elevate ice. I can't remember the acronym, but we had an acronym for that. <clears throat> and it completely reversed when we understood that you need to move the fluids out. You need to get movement back to the joints. And how do you do that? You've got to bypass the pain. The cool thing, Kathy, the level of efficacy when it comes to frequencies treating pain, can you just kind of give a, a quick, uh, maybe a one minute synopsis of why that affects the inflammatory response, the extra fluids, um, and kind of what's happening biologically? Because I think it's some people, people don't understand, so therefore they avoid what they don't understand. Sure. So, um, Anita, the, um, first of all, when you use frequencies, you know, I just had a doctor tell me recently that, that was using frequencies, and he said a patient came into his office with one leg four times larger than the other, and when he left in 30 minutes, they were equal size. Now, people would roll their eyes and say, that is impossible. But it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, cell, a cellular switch of fluids, extracellular, intracellular high fluid shift. And when you get the right frequencies, it just makes that pass through the membranes, the cell membranes. And um, it does some amazing things just with that. In fact, he, he called me specifically to tell me that to say, I just can't believe that just happened because he's been around some things that kind of give frequencies, but when you get to a cellular level, it changes everything that happens. So we're playing inside the mitochondria. We're really affecting the adenosine triphosphate, the ATP production. It's the old energy cycle in the cell and it gives battery charges to the last thing because we just give, so if we just give batteries to this cycle to energize it because the frequency has diminished in voltage. And, and by the way, I just learned pH, which was kind of a new thought for me. And it, the voltage was de decreased. And when you have that happen, we need to build it up or balance it or homeostasis or those words that means we're gonna build that frequency back up, make it even and balanced again in your system, which is where it should have been to start off with. So in that, when you get that energy back into that cell, where like a battery charger with your car run, that won't run anymore because the battery's down, we can give it energy, we can give it batteries and make it start again. That's a very simplified version of what we do. But what we've learned though, is similar to like, uh, so all of frequency is vibration. It's resonating at a certain rate per second. So if you have an A on a piano, for instance, that's 440 cycles per second. It's not 441, make it a sharp, 440 or 439 will make it flat. When you want 440 or you want an A, it has to be 440. And so when we want the right thing, we get the right frequency. So a good example that people see every day is like a radio station. If you have 101.5 and 102.8 on your stations, they're different stations. You don't have to turn it up and make it louder. You just got to get the right station to affect that cell in that way. 
Otherwise you have a football game over here and you have uh, country Western music on this side. So whatever it is, you have to get it right. So in my world, when people have me evaluate modalities, equipment and so forth, I'm wanting to know what the frequency is, what the range is, how accurate it is, and will it change and do different things? Because we may not all be the same, but we want to resonate to bring us all up. So different frequencies mean something. We may work on inflammation or scar tissues or bone spurs and all kinds of things with them. But you, if you're going to get it, you better get it right. If people really understood that they could actually do something besides a pill um, as a relief, and not have to mess up their pH, their hormones, their, uh, you name it, their, their um, <laughs> you know, the use of steroids and uh, anti-inflammatories is astounding. Don't miss out on part two, when you will find out the sources of energy, the negative impact of home and office technology, what we actually can do about it and how Kathy herself is fighting melanoma. If you would like to know the wearable technology that we are referring to, please look in the description box below.